Welcome everybody. My name is Shannon Sarna. I'm editor of The Nosher. Um, this is our high holiday um, cooking series for this year. Uh, we're going to be doing apple babka two ways tonight. An easier way and a, a, I wouldn't say a harder way, just a way with an extra step. It's not going to be hard. It's, it's still easy. It's just like if you don't want to put in the, all the effort, you know, you're it's the end of summer, you're at the pool, you want to just make it easy. We're going to show one way and then the other. Okay, so let me lay out some ground rules if you haven't been at our classes this time around. I'm going to focus on teaching and showing you guys the babka shaping technique. And I'm going to talk through as many of the frequently asked questions as I can while I'm teaching. And we're going to save the last 15 minutes for questions. I have already shared the recipe at the top of the uh, chat. I'm sharing it one more time. Sorry, I think I just sent it to a single person. I'm going to send it one more time here. This is the recipe we're working from today. You don't have to bake along with. You can make it another time to see what I'm doing. So thankfully you guys are here with me. So we're going to get started. So, oh my God, I need the dough. I put it outside. Hey, Gober, Jonathan, can you give me the dough? It's outside. I, I, I refrigerated the dough today and then it got very cold. So I put it outside to like warm it up a little bit. Gober. All right, well, I gotta get the dough in one second. Okay, so um, we're gonna start with splitting our dough in half and then we're gonna do half of our dough today with a store-bought apple butter. And then we're gonna do the other half with a homemade filling. So actually, before we even start with the dough, we are gonna start with our homemade filling. Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us and might have questions, I'm just gonna let you know we're saving the last 15 minutes of the class today for any questions, okay? So if you can hold your questions to the end, that would be really, really great. Um, and, um, and if we can also sort of avoid substitution questions, that would be great as well. This is the recipe we're making tonight. I'll talk through a couple of variations of ways you can do it, but like, let's just focus on what's, what's at hand here, okay? All right, so this filling recipe, which is in the recipe, is, I also use in challah. It's an apple, date, balsamic, sort of a homemade jam. And it's not very complicated to make. So um, I have pitted medjool dates here. I pitted them myself. I find that um, they, I think they're moister when they keep the, the pits in. It could, this could be made up. This could be in my head, but in my, in my head, they're moister when they um, still have the pits in. And then I have um, gala apples that I peeled and diced. I have the recipe. So the recipe is for six apples and two cups of dates, but I'm only making half the recipe because I'm only making one babka with the homemade filling. So I'm not, I'm not going to like go through all of the, um, all the measurements because I don't want you guys to get confused and then continue to have a lot of questions. So in here so far is dates and the apple. And now I'm going to put in um, water and balsamic vinegar. We're going to add a pinch of salt. We're going to add some cinnamon. I'm totally going to eyeball this cinnamon. Um, if you don't like cinnamon or you're allergic to cinnamon, first of all, you don't have to use it at all. You could do nutmeg or another warm sort of spice that you like, allspice, but it's really totally fine if you just leave it out. No big deal. Um, pinch of salt, which is really sort of a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm using fine sea salt. You could use table salt. I don't think I would use kosher salt for this. Um, and then I'm going to put about a, a tablespoon of honey. So just so we have our apples and honey theme, and then we have our sweet dates as well. So I'm gonna pop this on the stove and get this simmering. And then after it's cooked a little while, we're gonna turn it into our um, homemade um, filling. Okay. All right, next step is for me to get the dough, which is sitting outside. I think somebody wrote, I hope that the cat didn't eat it, but I don't have any cats, so. Hopefully no deer came to eat it, or husbands. Okay. Oh my God, doggy. Oh, you're fine. Okay, so here is my babka dough. And I know you guys are probably gonna have a lot of questions about making the dough, when to make the dough. 
So I made this earlier today. I had a natural break in my work. So I made the dough, I let it rise a little bit and then I popped it in the fridge. You can see I covered it with some plastic wrap and I put it in a really big bowl. And the reason that I'm doing this is because it's going to rise and I don't want it to rise and explode over the top. So can you make it the night before? Yes, you absolutely can. Same thing, just make sure you're putting it in a really big bowl or a really big container so that you're allowing enough space. If it does start to rise a lot, as Cheryl Holbrook shared um, last week, if you were joining us for her hollow shaping class, all you have to do is punch it down and make sure that it's not um, exploding all over your fridge. I would not let this sit more than a day, me personally. And I also, <laughs> who is Goldberg? Goldberg's my husband. His, his last name is Goldberg. I call him Goldberg. Funny question. I saw that pop up from David. Um, I, would not, I would not freeze this and I wouldn't make it more than about a day in advance. That's me. I, I have often made it the night before or in the morning, pop it in the fridge and then take it out later when I am ready to make it. So that's what I did today. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it in two. This is my food scale, I can't live without it. I use it for so many of my baking projects, but especially my challah, babka, things like that, where I'm weighing out my dough and I want it to be even. And one of the reasons why I always suggest using food scale and wanting it to be even is that um, it's not only more beautiful when you weigh things out and they're, they're even, it also bakes better. So if you have challah strands or your babka and you want them to you want to bake two babkas at the same time and, and you want the same weight, they're going to bake uh, roughly the same time if they're the same size, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So I'm going to weigh this and then I'm going to split it in two. We're going to make two babkas tonight, although this could also make three babkas. Uh, but I want to make um, I want to make one nice size round one. What do you guys think? Should we do one loaf? And one round or two rounds? I'll, I'll take I'll take commentary from the I'll take comments from the peanut gallery on this one. We want to make two rounds or one loaf, one of each, one of each. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. I saw a bunch of one of each, so that's that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna work with. All right, so I can hear that my filling is starting to come. The 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 um, liquid is starting to simmer a little bit. I'm just letting people into the room. So I'm just mixing this up a little bit and I'm gonna cover this in one minute. because I want all that moisture to stay inside and I wanna kind of steam the apples. All right, I need the right color. I'm still laughing at the person who said who's Goldberg. He was just here talking on the phone and I was like, you can't be in here talking on the phone. I'm about to teach you class. You should be down here washing dishes, don't you think? Uh, okay, one more step before we actually shape the dough. Silly me. Okay, so I decided to do one more thing special for this babka, um, inspired by my friend Miriam, who is an excellent baker, and we're going to do a crumb topping. And I love crumb toppings, and I happen to love this recipe for crumb toppings. I use it on top of cakes, babka and also like fruit crumbles crisps kind of thing it's really simple to make it's so good it's absolutely addictive you could put it on anything and it's oh, so good okay so all right crumb topping one and a quarter cups all-purpose flour now here i have one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon i'm not sure if that's actually the right measurement but it could be one teaspoon it could be a little bit more um, yes, it's in the recipe. It's in the recipe. Everything's in the recipe. It's on the site. And if you don't know where to look, it's on thenosher.com. Just, it's totally on the homepage. Um, okay. So, and then we have, okay, what did I say? Okay. So we have one and a quarter cups of flour. We have one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. I have a quarter cup of granulated sugar. Then I have a third a cup of packed brown sugar. And then the last thing I gotta melt this is melted butter. All right, so one of the other questions I often get about babka is gluten-free. Can you make babka gluten-free? I know somebody was gonna ask if you didn't, um, if you didn't, if somebody didn't already put it in the comments, but, um, you absolutely can make babka gluten-free. You're gonna to wanna to use a one-to-one -one replacement. 
King Arthur, Bob's Red Mill, both very good. My one word of caution always for gluten-free baking is if you have digestive issues and that's the um, reason why you do gluten-free, then um, you, know, you want to check the ingredients in a one-to-one -one flour because there's other stuff that they put in there, or at least some brands. So you may just want to take a look before you automatically um, use that. It's not going to be the same. It's just not. Um, the other, uh, the other thing I was going to say is about making vodka dough is, can you make it non-dairy? A very commonly asked question, super easy to make dairy. It comes out, non-dairy comes out fantastic. So in this recipe, there's butter, eggs, and milk, right? So it's, it's a very, um, uh, it's a very enriched dough, which means it has a lot of fat in it, which is why it's so delicious. It also means that all that fat weighs down the rising, um, time. Uh, mean, rising process rather. So it's not going to rise the same way that a challah is. It's also not going to take as long. So you probably would let your challah dough rise three to four hours before braiding it and baking it, or maybe two to three hours. But with um, babka, you don't need to. It could be one to two hours and you're done, especially on a hot and humid day like today. Oh, okay, this is perfect. And I'm just going to turn down my filling because it's bubbling up and I want this to start to cook down. Okay. All right, so now I have my melted butter. Let me finish my thought and then we'll mix up this filling. So um, to make the babka dough non-dairy, you just wanna replace the milk or the butter and the butter with your non-dairy milk and non-dairy non butter of, cho of choice. So you can use vegetable oil, coconut oil. I don't typically recommend coconut oil, but you can use it. You can use um, vegan butter or margarine, all will be fine. And for the milk, you can use almond milk, coconut milk, um, cashew milk, soy milk, rice milk. I would oat milk. I would personally recommend, I like vanilla almond milk for baking um, or coconut milk. Those are my two top choices. Um, cashew milk is supposed to be very good, but I'm highly allergic to cashews, so I won't recommend that one. Um, a little tip that no one asked for, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway best non-dairy cake recipe is the Hershey's chocolate cake recipe on the back of the box. And I specifically recommend using um, Hershey's special dark cocoa powder. So good, very easy, comes out perfect every time. I know no one asked me for that recommendation, but I'm giving it to you anyway. So if you've never made that cake, it's really fantastic. It's sort of a perfect afternoon coffee, afternoon tea cake. Okay, so just to repeat, in the bowl I have flour, white sugar, brown sugar, oats, cinnamon, pinch of salt. And now I'm going to add Now I'm going to add my uh, melted butter. It's just one stick of melted butter. And this comes together so easily. That's what I love about it. I, I know the measurements in my head because I make it all the time. And we're just going to mix this together until it kind of forms these loose clumps. You don't want it to be a smooth batter. We're not looking for a cake batter consistency. You're looking for something to look like crumbs. So if it's a little bit messy, that's okay. Sometimes I even do this with my hands. I don't wanna to get too messy and have to keep uh, washing my hands. For the person who said I should be wearing an apron, thanks mom. Uh, I actually almost never wear an apron, but I also almost never wear nice clothes either. So, sorry, not sorry. My husband wants to take me out to dinner after this, so I don't really want to change. So I'm wearing a nice top. We're all gonna just deal with it. Okay, so kind of clumpy, you can see. And this is perfect. This is exactly what you want. Again, I put this on top of cakes, on top of babka. You could put it on top of a challah if you want to make a crumb topping challah, um, on top of a fruit crisp, something like that. You don't have to put oats in. Um, instead of oats, you could also put almonds or nothing. All right. So now that we have our filling going and our topping is made, shout out to Miriam Gawan for the idea of the cinnamon crumb topping. We are going to work on making our first, um, first vodka. So like I said, I split my dough in two and I am working on, let's put this aside for one second. 
if you guys really can't see what I'm doing, I will break out my other tripod, but I think that I'm gonna be able to tilt the laptop down and you guys will be able to see. So you can shout out if you cannot. Hold on, I'm just letting some people in. So many people here. It's so nice on a Monday. Okay, group. So I'm working right now. This is another tip no one asked for, but I'm obsessed with this thing. It is a silicone um, baking mat. Now it's not for baking on, it's actually like a, a rollout mat or a, I don't know, workspace mat. You can find it on Amazon. I think I bought it for about $20. Um, I love it. I do it for my challah. I take it out for anything that I'm rolling out, cookies. It's really, it, it saves a lot of cleanup. So you can see, um, but it looks like it's a big mat and it rolls right up. Amazon, $20, $10, something like that. Probably could also find it at Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay, so starting with my first piece, I am going to tie my hair back. I am going to roll this into a rectangle and I'm also going to take out my ruler because I know someone is gonna to say to me, how long is it? In a not appropriate, inappropriate way. The other great thing about this rolling mat is that it has measurements, so you can kind of see how long it is. Um, okay, fantastic. If you, I, I saw somebody ask you, we know what the mat is called. If you, if you just go into Amazon or even Google, um, I'm trying to do seven things at one time right now, which is why the name is escaping me, but um, it's like a silk hat or silicone, um, baking mat and they'll either be a baking sheet those are the ones that you would put on your um, baking pan to actually bake on top of in the oven this is like a workspace mat it's much larger it has measurements right written right on it okay so i'm gonna make quite a long babka because this first one we're gonna make it actually you know what we're gonna make the apple butter one into a low pan we're gonna do the low pan all right, so I'm gonna probably make it, make it a little bit less long because we're putting it into the pan. All right, so let's see. I have this size and I have this size. What are we saying? What are we saying? Is it bigger or smaller? I think this one is gonna fit in the smaller very nicely, but maybe the bigger. We'll roll it out a little bit more. Now, if you don't wanna do apple butter, first of all, you can really do any filling that you want. A fig jam would also be very, very nice in this and sort of fallish. Pumpkin, uh, pumpkin butter would also be nice and very appropriate for the Rosh Hashanah season. Um, pumpkin is a symbolic food in many North African traditions. Okay, so, so you can see what I rolled this out. Now this is very forgiving, so it doesn't have to be exact, but because you're gonna ask, it is about 14 inches long by 12 inches wide. And the dough recipe I split into two. So we're making two boxes. You can also split this into three. Now I know one of the next questions I'm gonna get is, I went apple picking or I have all these apples. Can I make it with fresh apples? And the answer is no, you cannot. No, the answer is you can do whatever you want. But I do not recommend adding raw apples into a challah or a babka because any kind of raw fruit or vegetable is going to have a lot of water in it. And that means it's going to alter, sorry, I'm like this. It's gonna alter the, um, it's gonna alter the dough. It's gonna alter the integrity of this bake. So I would strongly recommend that you either bake your apples down first before you add them, or you just use a, pre-bought um, jam, this is less awkward. Okay, um, look, again, not in your kitchen, you do whatever you want, but that's my advice. I wouldn't do it with peaches, apples, I've tried it, I just don't think it turns out as well. I think you have to cook them a little bit and get some of that moisture out first. Speaking of which, let's check on how our filling is doing. Okay, it's going good. We want it to reduce down a little bit now, we want those apples to continue to cook. I'm just going to show you it's released some of that juice from the apples and everything's getting really nice and soft. So we're going to continue to let this cook while we're doing our first babka and then we're going to put that through the first babka. So I said that this was the one that took like a little extra step, but it really wasn't that complicated. 
But again, it's a busy time of year. It's back to school. Rosh Hashanah is literally on Labor Day. So why not make your life easier and do some, some apple butter? I'm going to use a spatula for this, I think, instead. So this is Stop and Shop apple butter. I'm sure you could probably find some better quality apple butter at your farmer's market or local store, but you know, I was at Stop and Shop, so that's what we got. We're going to do this one in the loaf pan, and we're going to top it with that cinnamon and oat crumb topping, which is so, so, so delicious. If you're just joining us, because a lot of people have joined us, we're making apple babka two ways. I did see a bunch of questions at the beginning about these sessions being recorded. They are recorded. There's only one that for whatever reason didn't record and it was Sonia Sanford's Kreplach class. I'm very sorry. It was an excellent class and we'll just have to do it again another time so we can record it or have Sonia do um, some video recordings of it. So as you can see, oh, so where to find it is either um. We will be adding all of those sessions into the recipes themselves, but they're also on the My Jewish Learning YouTube page. So if you go just type in YouTube, My Jewish Learning, it's there, it's under the Nasher Cooking playlist. It should be pretty easy to find. Um, and I will try at the end to share a link for those. Um, also, if you're getting the reminder emails, I'm pretty sure that they're going in those as well. So, okay, we have our dough that we rolled out. We said it was about 14 inches by 12 inches a thin layer of this apple, apple butter on top. And now I'm gonna roll this up. I'm rolling it up now. What am I gonna do? So did I decide which pan I'm gonna do? This one? Okay, I'm gonna do the long one. This is gonna be the messy part when we cut it down the middle, but that's okay. We know it's gonna be messy and it's gonna be all right. And then someone's gonna yell at me again for not wearing an apron. That's fine. So I'm gonna, Oh, you guys probably didn't see what I just did. I'm sorry. Oh, it went over this. So I just, I'm just rolling it up like this. And then I'm going to pinch it closed. Rolling it up. I'm going to do this again and I'll make sure you can see it better this time. Okay, rolling it up, rolling it up, rolling it up. Um, I think someone's asking, can you make the dough in a bread machine? So I just, I'm just going to say this one more time. It, Save your questions for the end. Can we make up a song about it? Save your questions for the end. All right, I promise I will get to as many questions at the end of this. And I will try to talk through all of the things right now. All right, so we see we have the log of babka filled with the apple. And now here I have a dough cutter. Sorry, I'm just turning this down. This is my dough cutter. I love it. It's also called um, like a dough scraper. It's great for cleaning up the counters. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut it boop, 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 down the middle. Okay. This is the best part. This is the most fun part about making babka. And if you can't see, bench scraper. That's right. A bench scraper. Yes. I call it a dough cutter. Um, and I like my word better. But um, it's really great for hala and and babka, and sometimes for doing other things as well. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. Oh, it's so messy, but that's okay. Now you can see, you can see those layers of babka, right? That's the quintessential, and now we're gonna twist this. And that's what makes those beautiful, beautiful twists. When I was first learning to make babka, I was so intimidated because I thought, oh my God, how do you get those beautiful, folds of dough and filling like I feel so intimidated to try and make this and then once I saw how easy it was I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I was intimidated so what I'm going to do to fit this in the pan is I'm going to smush it a little bit this is what I do I'm just smushing it I'm going to wipe my hands off I'm going to let all these people in oh my gosh I'm going to find my cooking spray I'm going to spray the inside of my baking pan. Somebody asked what size baking pan. This is nine inches by five inches. So this is a little bit of a bigger loaf pan. 
This is probably a more standard size little pen. This is William Sonoma. This is Wilton, uh, care of Amazon. I really love the, um, I really love this gold uh, bakeware from William Sonoma. I've had this since we got married. We're married almost 12 years and it still is in perfect condition. So for whatever it's worth, I love that. I get no endorsements. <laughs> no one is paying me to say this. Okay, so we're putting this very messy apple butter babka into the pan here. And it looks a mess, right? You're like, what is that? It looks a wreck, Shannon, what is happening? But we're gonna let this do a second rise and it is gonna fill this pan. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside. In fact, I'm gonna drape it with a towel and let it sit. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean up my workspace. So if we have like one or two questions, let me admit some people in here. And let's take a picture of how many people are here. 482. Wow. Thank you guys for being here. It's so nice. Okay. Um, if you go to the website, I added the crumb topping. So I'm sorry. Go to the website, www.thenasher.com, and on that, uh, and on that recipe has the crumb top, but I'll repeat the ingredients again. So all we did was plop them into a bowl and combine them. It's one and a quarter cup all-purpose flour, uh, a fourth a cup of granulated sugar, a third a cup of packed brown sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt or a pinch of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and a third a cup of oats, one stick of unsalted melted butter. Okay, right, okay. Hey, Lori, thank you for your question. I am not, I, I'm not taking replacement questions. If you don't wanna make the dates, you should choose something else because I don't know what else to suggest. This is the recipe, it's date apple balsamic. It is fantastic. So if you don't like dates, can't have dates, don't, whatever, I would, I would strongly suggest just buying something or making something else. Um, I don't have a replacement suggestion. Um, okay. We're gonna roll out our other piece of dough in one second, and we're also gonna finish making our filling. Um, I use old fashioned oats, but I also don't think it would matter that much. So I think whatever you have is, um, is, uh, is totally fine. Um, what are the dimensions of the mat that you're using? I don't know, it's big, 26 inches by eight, 18 inches. It's, it's, it's very large. It's very large. It's great. And I use it all the time. I highly recommend it. Um, um, okay. Sue and Marty, thank you for that question. I think you should email me with that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Admitting some more people. Okay. So let's check on our filling. The most important part here to know when the filling is done is that the apple should be quite soft and a good portion of the liquid should have evaporated, which is my apples are soft, my dates are really mushy. It's almost like making a harosa in some ways, but you're cooking the apple. Um, although some um, some uh, some versions of harosa do uh, cook down the dates or other dried fruit. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this in the food processor, and that's gonna sort of turn that into the jam and we're gonna fill it. So give me one second to do this. I'm just popping it in my food processor. If there's any other questions while this is going, um, I'm happy to answer those. Oh, here's a great one. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I do use this filling for bab, for a challah. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, that's that's where it came from. Is, uh, I do this for a apple uh, date balsamic challah. So uh, absolutely, you should do that. It's so delicious. And wait till you smell it when it's baking. All right. This is still very hot, which is not ideal. You would usually want to cook it um, 
and let it cool down a little bit before filling it, but that's okay. It smells really good and you can see it's quite thick. It's thicker than that apple butter, which is why it's a great filling. Um, I'm a fan of fillings that have a high sugar content and are spreadable. So Nutella, peanut butter, cookie butter, jams. And by jams, I mean not the delicious artisanal jam you buy at like a farmer's market or local farm or your friend who makes it down the street. I mean like high fructose corn syrup jam. And people get very upset when I say this. This is not my suggestion. I learned it from a pastry chef in New York City. And what he explained to me is that the higher the sugar content, and especially if they have something like high fructose corn syrup in it, it's not gonna run all over the place. I don't know if you've made hamantashen and they were oozing out everywhere, right? That's because it was too loose or there was too much or it had too much water. So you want something that's like a little bit thicker and a little higher in sugar content. I see somebody raising their hand. Um, we're, I'm not gonna, if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, but, but we're not um, we're not taking questions in that way. I'm sorry, it would just be far too hectic to uh, allow that. So forgive me, um, but uh, we're not doing that. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on our second babka, and we're gonna make this one round. So we're really, we're starting almost the exact same way. I'm gonna tilt this down. except that I really want to roll it quite long. And the reason that I want to do that is for how I'm going to shape this. So to make it into a circle, now you could absolutely put this in eight and eight inch baking pan. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to do it free form on a baking sheet. Okay, so you can see I'm rolling it long. It's already, Definitely over 12 inches, over, yeah, over four, it's just at 14 inches now. So it's probably gonna be a, like 15 to 16 inches when all is said and done. I wanna have enough length to work with so that I can twist it and make it into a wrap. That's the reason why. So when I'm doing it in a loaf pan, I can actually make it a little bit shorter so that I don't have to squish it quite so much. You guys saw how I had to squish it to fit it in the pan. That's the reason. So when you're doing it free form and around, or if you happen to have a very long pan, you're gonna shape it slightly differently so that it fits in. Now look, if it doesn't look perfect, it's still gonna taste delicious. It's fine, it doesn't matter, it's no big deal, but these are just small tips. Okay. So I have my, my apple balsamic date. So I saw somebody ask, what if you don't wanna use balsamic vinegar? So you could also use actually red wine. You could just use water if you want. I mean, the nice part about the balsamic is that it adds a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tang, um, but if for whatever reason that's not your jam, no pun intended, then just, you know, we're, it's basically we're just adding a little bit extra bump of flavor and also liquid, because we're, we were cooking all that down to make this kind of paste situation. Okay, so I, I want to be careful not to have too much filling here and go super crazy. Then it's going to be a mess. But if I do have a little bit left, it would be great on some toast, letting more people in. And again, I'm going to roll this up lengthwise. Can you guys see what I'm doing this time? I hope. Okay, so the same thing I did last time, except you guys have a better view. Now, because the jam is hot, it is gonna make it a little bit harder to cut because it's like kind of softening the, the dough. So just keep that in mind. So if you make it ahead of time, it probably will be a little bit easier to work with. So I would recommend doing that if possible, but I kind of wanted to be able to show you guys um, in a real time how to make the filling and that it's, it's not super, it's not complicated at all. It's just an extra step. Um, I think I might have mentioned this before, but again, if you don't want apple butter and you don't want to make this filling, I think fig jam would be fantastic. You could even do like a fig jam with some nuts or some goat cheese or both. That would be really good. Yeah, it's quite soft to work with right now because of that filling. So I'm just trying to be careful as I cut it open. 
pumpkin butter would be lovely, but you know, you can fill babka with whatever you want. And I'm also just a big fan of having fun and trying out things, see what's in your fridge, see what's at your local store that you want to experiment with. Okay, cutting it down the middle. I just want you to know it's very exhausting to make babka and talk at the same time. So if I'm out of breath, <laughs> maybe I should talk slower. That might help also. All right. Or as my husband would say, Goldberg, as you heard earlier, he would just say, I should talk less. All right, here we go, here we go. So it's very soft and it's very warm, which is making this a little bit harder to shape, but it's still gonna taste delicious and be beautiful. And then we're gonna top both of these with that cinnamon oat crumb topping, yum. I'm telling you you could put that topping on anything and it would be delicious. So I'm now doing the fun part, twisty, twist, twist, twisty, twist, 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 twist. Make a big mess. And then we're gonna shape this into a circle. So I'm leaving the ends open for right now. My hands are very dirty, I'm grabbing this out. All right, so here is my baking sheet, mine with parchment. You could also use a silicone baking mat or baking sheet, a sew pad for this. But um, I find with something like with a filling like this, it is a little bit easier cleanup if you're using, um, if you're using a, um, parchment. All right, so I'm gonna now move this over onto my baking sheet and start to form this into a circle. Okay, so like I said, I left these ends open and these ends open over here as well. And I wanna kind of fake this out. So first of all, can you see here at the end here, there's not as much filling right here in this little nubby nub. I'm gonna cut that off. Goodbye nub, goodbye nub, because it's not really doing that much. It's just, you can see, there was almost no filling in there. See, okay, so I'm just setting this aside. And now I wanna kind of fake it like they are conjoined. So I'm gonna sort of tuck this one under here. Let's see, this one can go on top of here. No, I did that ugly. All right, hold on one second. I can't talk while I do this. All right, so I wanna twist them together. Twist, 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 and then twist again. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck one end under each of them, and it's a little bit messy over here, but when it's all baked up, especially with the, uh, so you can see that's like the ugly part, but it's okay. So now it's like a wreath. You could stick a bowl in here or some tin foil if you wanna leave that open space. This will fill up a little bit, but not that much. Okay, well now we have a bunch of other people coming in. Okie doke. Okay, um, shout out to my friend Rachel Hillman, who is also live texting this to my friends. So I just looked down at my phone and saw some funny comments. So hi Rachel, thank you for being here. It's really nice that you joined. Thanks for all your support and also for loving my children. Okay, so here's that crumb topping. So it's, it's all like kind of dried up now, which is perfect. You're gonna wanna eat this right away. You see the babka? We're gonna start to spoon this right on top. Now, if you don't wanna do a crumb topping, you can bake this as is. You can also do like a simple syrup, which is equal parts water and sugar. Melt it in a saucepan over medium high heat until the sugar dissolves and then set it aside until the babka comes out. When the babka comes out, you would brush it on top and it will be both very, very like shiny, add some sweetness, keep some moisture in, how it like gives that nice sheen. Sometimes you see at like a French pastry place, they'll have, um, they'll, rub, they'll uh, brush like apricot jam or another uh, jam on top of the pastries that they make. It's kind of a similar concept. You're adding a little bit of extra sweetness, a little bit of extra moisture to kind of lock in. But again, absolutely optional step. Okay, so that doesn't look half bad, right? Very festive filled with apple and date, super symbolic for Rosh Hashanah, and it's a circle and it has crumb topping. What more could you want?
Goldberg, are you down here? I was calling you before, you didn't hear me. Okay, next. Do you remember what that, this one looked like before? It still looks like a little bit of a hot mess, but you can see it's already risen and it's probably only been about 10, 15 minutes. So we're gonna cover this now with the crumb topping as well. But you do wanna let the babkas do a second, a good second rise. So I would say definitely 20 to 30 minutes for sure before baking it. Next question, how long do you bake it for? You're gonna bake it at 350 for around 30 minutes. So it bakes a nice while. How do you know when it's done? It'll be a little golden brown on top. Okay, doke. So I do have a little crumb topping left over. That's fine. You could bake it on a baking sheet and then like top your ice cream with it, or you could save it for something else. This is gonna continue to rise and the other one's gonna continue to rise. I'm gonna set those aside. And now I'm gonna wash my hands and answer some questions. So get your non-annoying, non-substitution questions ready. And I will spend the next 10 minutes answering all your questions. And I'm going to sit down. Okay. All right. I did cover the round one and it is rising. Um, do you ever add pectin to the jam? I don't, I don't really know much about jamming. Um, seems like next level, but if you know how to use it, like absolutely um, go for it. I do not have fully baked babkas to show you. I'm so sorry. Um, I don't want a lot of babka in my house because I will eat it. So I only had these, but what I will do is when these are finished, I will spend some time tomorrow morning taking some beautiful photos in natural light and I will post them in our Facebook group, um, The Nosher Cooking and Baking on Facebook. And I'll also post them on Instagram, Jewish Foods, our handle, so you can see what the finished product looks like. Um, Jonathan, somebody wants to say hello to you. Could you come in here for a second? Um, okay, somebody asked me to repeat the crumb topping. Sure, first of all, it is on the Nosher right now, so you can go there. It's in the apple babka recipe, but it is one and a quarter cup of flour. That's Goldberg. Somebody wants to know who Goldberg was. Goldberg. That's, that's my husband, Jonathan, who I call Goldberg, especially when I'm yelling at him. Um, say hi. hi and now how our children call me Goldberg. Yeah. When they're yelling at him. That's true. It's pretty cute when you have like a five year old going, Goldberg or Jonathan Goldberg. I think it's cute at least. Uh, Jewish cute. Um, Somebody's asking, clarify recipe on, on using fresh apples. Okay, so this I cannot overstate. I do not recommend using fresh apples. Not that I don't recommend using fresh apples. I don't recommend using raw apples. So fresh apples, yay, cook them. Just cook them. Even if you just saute them in a pan with olive oil or butter and some cinnamon, a pinch of salt, something like that. You wanna make, you wanna, you, you wanna take that moisture out. Otherwise it's gonna be very wet in your dough and not in like a good way, right? Like. Sometimes wet is good, maybe not this way. Um, you know, fruits and vegetables have a lot of water in them. Think about if you cook something with zucchini, right? Like you're, you're wringing out the water or even when you make latkes, right? You're wringing out some of that excess liquid that's in there. So if you, if you just put raw apples inside of a challah or a babka, you're gonna change the consistency of the dough. That's, that's my opinion. Again, you do whatever you want. That's my recommendation. Cook it down or use something that's already cooked. Um, okay. How about a drizzle of confectioner sugar mine with milk when it's cold? Oh my God, Jean, I love that idea. That's so, it's such a great idea. Like a little frosting, like a little coffee cake situation. Absolutely. If you do that, please send me a picture. I think it's a really, really great idea. Um, you don't have to press the crumbs into the dough. You could, if you like really want to get it in there and pile it on, but it, when it bakes, it ba it adheres. It's magic. It's butter and sugar. Um, okay. Oh, Marlene. Um, why are you not baking more if you have flour for a year? That's crazy. You can store it in the fridge. Flowers do go bad, um, but more likely like a whole wheat flour, almond flour, things like that, spelt flour, um, anything whole grain, um, 
uh, also things like sesame, um, yeast I keep in my fridge as well. But um, if you have flour for a year, it just means you need to be baking more often. Um, okay. Can you put the, the round vodka in a round pan? Absolutely you can. Do it up. Do it. Absolutely. We found Goldberg. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Roz. That's so nice. Thank you for the nice comment. Um, Jesse is right. Flour will last longer in the freezer. Um, Susan, I did pit the dates. I pitted them myself. They're, I like to buy dates with the pits in them. I was saying that to me, anecdotally, they seem like they stay moister when you buy them with the pits still inside. I like to pit it myself. Doesn't take that much. Um, oh, Peggy, you're right. Doesn't take that much time to pit them. Also, if you have kids around or partners, make them do the pitting. All right, one more time. The crumb topping, one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a third a cup of, no, third a cup of packed brown sugar, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a pinch of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a third a cup of oats. I use old-fashioned oats, but you can use what you have. And then one stick of unsalted butter melted. And then you just combine it with a spoon, with your hands. I think your hands work really great. And then you're gonna have these crumbs. See, it's like bigger size, smaller size. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you use figs instead of dates? Probably, go for it. I love that idea. If you make the dough the night before and leave it in the fridge, how long do you need to keep it out the next day before using it? Um, and not that long, actually probably a half an hour to an hour at the most because um, it's already risen and, it, and sometimes the dough is actually easier to work with when it's a little bit chilled with the babka um, but you don't have to leave it out for like three hours before you work with it okay um what kind of apple should you use a higher sugar apple i'm sure there's somebody who knows the the, the scientific answer to this. I am not that person. Um, I like gala apples. I usually have some kind of similar apple in my house. So that's what I used. Um, they're also like a decent size, but if you like it a little less sweet, you could do, you know, like the, um, the green ones, what are those called? That one. Um, we actually have a piece on the nausea. It's like all the best apples for baking. I don't think I wrote that. So you should read that or you can Google it. I think the kitchen um, also has articles about um, good apples for baking. The truth is I used some gnarly apples that have been sitting in my fridge that have like big brown spots that no one's going to eat, right? They're done. They're over, they're over the hill. And my kids are too old for applesauce now. So I can't even turn it into applesauce. So I saved these apples that were a little bit gnarly to make this filling. So I really think you could use whatever apples you have on hand. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I see a clarification. You said a one and a half teaspoon. The recipe says a half teaspoon. I think you could use however much cinnamon you want. So I use one and a half. You could do one. You could use a half. Um, the sky's the limit. You could also do pumpkin pie spice. You could do nutmeg. Or if you like Hawaii, which is a, um, a Yemenite spice blend. Let's see, do I have mine here? This is from one of my favorite companies based in Brooklyn, a lovely Israeli company, uh, couple, New York Shook. This is Cafe Hawaii. It's, um, it's used for coffee and tea. It's Yemenite. And um, I love it in my coffee, but you could also add something like this to the top. It would be very nice. Okay. I think we talked about round pan. When do you put the apple mixture on? Um, you make the dough, you split the dough, you roll out the dough, you put the apple mixture on, you roll it up, you cut it in half, you twist it up, you put it in a pan. Okay, I think we covered that. Okay, we have some more mess. Uh, did I peel the apples? I did peel the apples. Okay, I got four minutes left in me, guys. Okay. Um, if I wanted to make it in advance, how long can you leave it out or can you freeze it? Great question. It wouldn't be a Jewish cooking class if we didn't talk about freezing. Of course you can freeze it. Um, I actually hate freezing things, but um, other than chicken soup, meatballs, and tomato sauce, but I do think that babka freezes well. Everything else, I'm like, just eat it, just make it fresh. But if you wanted to make it now and then put it in the freezer for Rosh Hashanah next week or another holiday or whenever, it does, it does freeze well. Or I would say it keeps decently for two to three days, okay? 
Um, Jane, I agree, would make it a coffee cake, but who's complaining? Coffee cake is delicious. Did you peel the apples? I did peel the apples. Um, oh, I missed a suggestion. Could you please repeat your Hershey's dark chocolate tip? Yes, I'm happy to talk about this, even though it's very, very off topic. Best, um, best non-dairy dessert, in my opinion, that's very easy, is the chocolate cake recipe on the back of the Hershey's box. Any Hershey's box, but Hershey's special dark cocoa powder, which I buy in boxes of six, because I love it so much, I think makes it extra good. I use um, vanilla almond milk to make it, and um, it just it comes out really perfect. And anyway, highly recommend. They did not pay me to say this, although I'd be very happy if they would. I do not recommend making the dough and freezing it. I do not. Um, okay, I think we got to almost all the questions. I'm just going through. Thank you for all of the very, very, very kind um, very, very, very kind comments. I really appreciate that. Uh, usually I have somebody kind of helping me. And so I was sort of navigating a lot of different things tonight. So thank you for your patience. Um, we have two more classes this week. So I hope you'll join us on Wednesday. We're making a, um, very rush on a perfect apple cider chicken with very, very notable, acclaimed and beloved food writer, Leah Koenig. Um, I am a huge fan girl of her and I think it's gonna be a really lovely class. She's so knowledgeable. So come, we're all gonna learn something, this I'm sure. And then on Thursday night, we are making um, Syrian leek fritters with Sylvia Fallis, who is a really experienced um, home cook, caterer and cooking instructor. And um, um, this is a traditional Syrian dish, but other Sephardi traditions also make leek fritters. Leeks are another symbolic food for Rosh Hashanah. It's not just apples and honey. There are so many others. Pumpkin, candied gourd, um, dates, pomegranate. So leeks are another one of them, and, um, and we'll be making that with her. And then next week, we'll be doing our last high holiday class with one of my favorite writers, Tanaz Sassouni. We'll be making Koresh Be, which is a Persian beef and um, persimmon stew, very traditional for before Yom Kippur. So now it's also super knowledgeable, so it's going to be a great class. Um, and that um, is on the schedule and will be, be next week. So, um, okay, thank you guys so very, very much for joining us. And uh, now I'm going to go out to dinner with Goldberg, and I hope you guys have a great night. Um, see you maybe on Wednesday night. <laughs>